So I think for me, the whole sort of classic car interest and, and the want for classic cars sort of came from my childhood. I'd seen old classic cars that I'd never seen before on sort of MTV and in certain music videos and it just captured me as a child. I used to buy little models of Dodge Vipers and, and all this sort of stuff, stuff that I, you know, had never seen on the road before. You could see, you know, various UK based car brands and models, but you couldn't see the cars that I sort of lusted for. So that's where the love for different cars came from I think. So it's the summer and I'm just about to turn 25 and I was able to uh, purchase a 1966 Cadillac uh, Coupe de Ville. Absolute dream car at the time and I, I loved it with literally all my heart. This was never a project car, it was never a car to make anything out of, it was my car. You know life goes on, things change and I unfortunately had to sell that just to fund what I do now for a living and it was the biggest regret I ever had but the best thing I've ever done at the same time. It actually cuts me up a little bit inside to know that, that car isn't actually mine anymore. Cars to some people are a bit more sentimental than than others. So going full circle I started looking about six months ago for a, another car that would do that to me. I think everyone knows I've had a, quite a few project cars for uh, my YouTube channel which I've you know tried to love and I've tried to do things with but you know, when the views stop on the videos that you're making of the cars that you're not really that into, they become sort of ornaments and you don't really care for them. That's the point where I sort of not necessarily give up, but I try and think of a different way of getting what I want and still making, you know, a living from what I actually do. But life goes on, you know, bills have got to be paid. If, uh, if cars don't meet the criteria, then unfortunately they have to go and people sometimes don't understand that. So I started searching six months ago, I started searching for something that would still give me that buzz, still give me that want to actually do stuff to cars, regardless if people actually liked it or not. It was something for me. And you know, the demise of other projects, I didn't want it to be something that would be, you know, oh, he's, he's bought one of these, I can't believe he's bought that. Or something that people, you know, I had to make content out of. I wanted something for me, something that would actually mean something to me and something that was more sentimental more than anything. At the same time being something so different and so weird that it wouldn't fit into a crowd and that was the biggest thing for me is I never wanted to fit in. I think car enthusiasts would understand this. Some people may not understand it, some people may still be cut up and, you know, hate the idea that cars get sold and stuff, but to find a sentimental car when you actually do it and when you get it, it's the best feeling in the world. But yeah, six months ago I started looking, uh, I started planning, and thankfully I've been able to purchase something that I I personally think, you know, it's, it's for me, it's my car, it's my decision, it's, you know, something that I want to drive around in, and I think I'm going to be really happy with it. I think, yeah, I'll hopefully be able to daily drive it, take it on trips, go to car shows in it and stuff, that's sort of the whole idea of the car, but it's mainly for me, mainly for me and, you know, get the missus in at the weekend and go to the pub in. I tick the box in my head that I've got something that I actually like on the driveway rather than something that I think would just make a couple of views on YouTube. And that's where this incredibly hilarious purchase has come from. I read every day about people buying new cars on YouTube and you know what they're going to do with them and stuff and this isn't going to be like that, it's going to be my car and I sort of want to do what I want to do to it and modify it in the way I want to do it and yeah I'm going to still make videos on it because I love what I do and I want to, when I'm 70, look back at these videos and realise what I was doing you know at my age and absolutely love the cars that are around me and if they don't exist anymore or those cars aren't around at least I've got that as sort of a sentimental throwback for myself more than anything. I think being a car enthusiast is a bit of a funny one because these days a car enthusiast has to drive a certain car or be a certain way and stuff and that's not the case. The classic car scene to me has been a really really big part of my life. I've just never really covered it because at the end of the day I think the younger generation don't really appreciate these sorts of cars which is a huge shame because yeah it might drive like a bit of an old shed. It might look like an old shed as well but the character and the just the feel of driving something like this is just on another level.
and I've driven cars, I've driven tons and tons of cars from every generation and every year and every power and drivetrain, everything, and there's nothing to me like an old classic car that's just nice, that's well put together, and it makes you feel good. It makes you feel like, to me anyway, that you've actually achieved something, which I know sounds so silly to some people, but for me, this means so much to me. More than just like, oh, another project on the you know driveway and we're gonna do this to it, I'm gonna put some wheels on it and then we're gonna wrap it and then throw it back out when I can't be asked or it fails its own OT or whatever. It's not gonna be like that and my Cadillac wasn't like that. You know, I actually cried when that car left me and Someone will laugh at that and someone won't understand why that car, a car, but you know, a piece of metal would make you feel a certain way, but I don't think you've then found the car that you actually want to be driving. I just think after a lot of thought in my own head that this could be the next, you know, Cadillac in my opinion, you know, for the next couple of years, this could be the car that is sentimental to me and a bucket list car as well that I can just tick off the list and thank myself for working really hard for. So yeah, let's talk about the car. It's a, it's a 1972 Dodge D100. Fantastic story behind this car. So I'm led to believe in 1972, this was actually bought by the US military. Um, it was shipped to Germany, Denmark, that sort of place. And it was used there for nine years until 1981 when it was actually first registered on the road. So between 1972 and 1981, it wasn't actually road registered whatsoever. So we can only assume that it was you know put in the back of a Chinook and flown to different locations it was sat on an airbase or used in that way at that time but after that it was actually bought by uh, a gentleman that drove it for 20 years uh, in and out you know taking his kids to school he put seat belts in it he just drove it as like a normal car for 20 years the car then was bought by the person I bought it off of um, and the engine conversion was completed by him. It would have come with a 5.3 litre V8 from the factory but it actually has a Volvo 940 2.3 litre turbocharged engine in it now with a four speed automatic. Again, I've never seen a Volvo engine in an American car. I'm sure there is a lot out there, but we're in the UK, so I've never really seen anything like this. That's what's really captured my eye. The paint itself is patinaed blue, sort of rusty look, but the underneath of the truck is incredibly solid. The bed is incredibly solid. The chassis, you know, the brakes work really well. Although it's, you know, gonna be a running and driving, I'm not gonna say project, but it's gonna be a car that I can just enjoy and do little bits to myself. You know, I'd change the wheels, lower it a little bit more, all that sort of stuff. The bed itself actually is a really interesting story. So the rear bed of these is usually a slab side or so to my knowledge in the 1972s, but the previous owner has actually bought a step side sides and welded and cut them onto the bed of this truck. So you wouldn't usually get a 1972 in a step side or they would be incredibly rare. So this is actually something you wouldn't really see on the road, even if you saw another 1970s D100, you, you wouldn't actually see a step side version of this truck. And that sold it to me because I love step sides. I, although like a swept side, I like the idea of uh, a huge flat panel going down the side of the truck. I really, really had a lust for a step side. So again, that was a huge selling point for me is the whole step side look and the sort of bubble arch of this pickup truck. Modification wise, it's lowered. It's got the Volvo engine in it, obviously. Uh, it's got a couple of gauges inside. So yeah, that's it. I, uh, I've bought a 1972 D100 pickup truck that has a Volvo engine in it. <laughs> But there's a lot to be done. Um, I want to do a lot to this, and I'm not going to say oh, I'm going to respray and I'm going to redo this and redo that because I just want to enjoy it. I want to drive it around and cruise to the pub on a Sunday. I want to cruise to meets in it. I want to get my mates in it and and just drive it, enjoy it, and have something different. To me, owning something like this is just goals. It's absolute goals because I never wanted to fit in with my cars. That was the whole idea of why I started what I was doing. I wanted to find the weird and wonderful cars and expose them. And and I wanted to have a weird and wonderful car myself too. And this is a sentimental truck to me. It really is, it already is. And I've, I've driven it back a 10 hour round trip to actually go and pick this up and I was left absolutely speechless. So hopefully I have many days of cruising around in this truck, doing little bits and bobs to it, making it my own as well. 
and just creating something that I want rather than sort of following the crowd. And you know what? It's okay not to like other people's cars. It's it's absolutely fine. And I'm not buying this to, oh, I've got to be different. I've got to this, I've got to that. I'm just ticking boxes in my own head. So in the long run, I can look back and go, yeah. <laughs> Remember that one time I owned that Volvo engine pickup truck? That was funny, wasn't it?